never hit puberty, but I am an adult. I, I watch you guys. You Washington. Has anyone heard that name? Awesome. He was a former slave born in the 1800s. Later in his life, he decided to build his own university so everyone of color would have some place to go for higher education. He hit a roadblock. No one was willing to sell him bricks, so he built the bricks himself. Never stop. No matter what happens, never stop. Um, I was born on the west side of Chicago. My mom was 14. My um, father was 15, I believe. Um, my mother raised my brother and I as a single parent working three jobs. We barely saw her. And um, my father who was the neighborhood crackhead. It's, it wasn't funny back then, but it's funny now. I did not know anything outside of my neighborhood. And to drag that point is, I live 20 minutes from, I guess you guys call it the Willis Tower now, and I have never actually been there before. I was in a sheltered environment and did not know that there were life out. There was a life outside of the west side of Chicago. There was a life outside of the needles and the drugs that I had to walk over in order to get to school. I didn't know that there was something different. When I was in the eighth grade, I went to see someone by the name of Mae Jemison. She was the first African-American astronaut to go out to space. And she was from a similar neighborhood on the south side of Chicago. And I went to hear her speak and I was really excited because I didn't have to be in class that afternoon. But what made me even more happy was to know that someone like me, someone that spoke like me, someone that talked like me, someone that knew what it's like to be me, was able to achieve something miraculous in my eyes. It, it wasn't a whole, a once in a lifetime type of thing. This came from hard work and dedication. And I'm like, if she can do it, then I can do it. No, I'm not trying to go out of space, but I would like to go to get it. So from that day on, I thought, I'm moving to Italy. I'm moving to Italy. You know, and of course, my cousins, my siblings looked at me like, really? You, really? What's wrong with you? But at the age of 17, I graduated high school. And 10 days later, I left to join the service. I was in the military for eight years. The first four, fun, cool, I went to Italy. I lived there, actually. And I've been to Turkey, Israel. Gibraltar, Africa, I mean, you name it. I've been to more countries than I have states. And um, near 9 11 happened, and of course, I had to re enlist. A little side note my son was a newborn when the actual the day 9 11 the towers came down. My son was a newborn. He wasn't, he was maybe three weeks, I'm not sure. But um, I got called back to the base, and I'm like, I just had a newborn. What am I supposed to do? And he was being funny. He said, bring the baby with you. So I did. And we had to go to the base. We had to be on base for days. And my son was an infant, but to this day, he said that he helped um, defeat Osama bin Laden. And I'm, I'm not the one that brushed the kids. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I actually ended up getting hurt um, in 04, and I got out of service in 05. And when I came home, I came back to Chicago. And for a while, I thought everything had changed, but it was me that had changed. It was me that had seen war. It was me that had traveled the world. And now I found myself divorced, homeless, and a single parent all within the span of a year because I got sick and I thought the military was going to take care of me, but that was not the case then. So it was difficult. And I needed, I felt like crawling into a hole and die, but I had these babies I had to take care of. So somehow I had to keep going. And this way is hard. In order to keep going, I had to cut off some ties, and those ties were my family. So I found this place called Lafayette that I did not know how to pronounce, but I came here anyway. And I gave my children something that I never had, a 
safe growing environment. And now I'm at the point where my children, I believe, in two out of three, I'm going, I'm counting down, I got like 800 and some days for my third and who's the number. And um, then she'll be gone. So I needed to know what was next for my life. You know, I had all these accomplishments, but then I stopped to raise my children, which I love. But what, who am I without them? So I noticed there was a problem in this community. And the problem was African American women and men do not have a lot of options when it comes to beauty supplies. I like beauty supplies. I love makeup. I love hair. That was a need. It was a need in the community, which is the first step to owning your own business, recognize a need, and something you have a passion about. That it happens to be my passion. So that's how I put two and two together. And when I decided to make this a thing, I searched high and low in Tippecanoe County for assistance, for help, for guidance, for loans, for grants, everything. And I got a whole bunch of, uh, let me look into that, I'll call you back, or a whole bunch of voicemails that never got answered. I did not stop. Booker T. Washington made his own words. So I kept searching and I finally found someone to help in Indianapolis. So right now, my store has been open for almost two months. My days are spent doing numbers. <laughs> that is my biggest thing that I can focus on. But while I'm doing those numbers, I'm also still learning. SBA.gov has a learning platform on there. So the things that I'm not sure about marketing, numbers, inventory, I can log on to there in between customers and figure out, hey, I'm stuck on this. How do I do this? So it may be opportunities out there. It may not be. But if I can tell you anything, it's making opportunities. When you hit a wall, build one. And um, when you hit a wall, break it down. That's what I'm trying to say. This is Black Wall Street. In the 1920s in Tulsa, Oklahoma, this group of black people started what is called Black Wall Street. And as you can see from this side, I'll pass it around if anybody wants to see it. All these businesses, were owned, maintained, and governed by black people, along with their own personal properties that they had. It was self-reliant and self-independent. They didn't get outside help. They built them themselves. If they can do it, if Booker T. Washington can do it, if I can do it, you can do it. So, that's it. That's all. all right. <laughs>